Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to F1 Podcast. This is episode 75. As always, you're joined by Pep and Max. Max, how are you feeling today? I'm great, mate. Mate, it's been a, a few days since the Hungarian Grand Prix, so we're going to talk about that mm-hmm. and a few things that have been happening since then. Um, and, well, let's talk about it, mate. The Hungarian Grand Prix, what were your thoughts? Had a bit of everything, didn't it? Oh. Uh, um, you know, we uh, we started off with Fernando Alonso. Oh, sorry, with uh, Felipe Massa doing that brilliant move on... Uh, on Lewis Hamilton yeah. to uh, to take the lead, and uh, we all know what happened in the end, but uh, it was an exciting race, I thought. Yeah, when he was coming down to the turn one and he smoked up the tyres, I thought, oh, he's going to break really late here, and of course mm-hmm. he did, and um, he did so well to get Lewis off the off turn one, and then he just sort of really, you know, continued on with it, and, and it seemed like Ferrari just had some really good pace, Max. Oh, oh no doubt about it. I mean, uh, Felipe did a, a Lewis on, on Lewis. I guess, um, you know, we're used to seeing Lewis uh, coming through with these dorming charges here and there, and, yeah. uh, and Felipe uh, uh, did one back to him, I guess. Uh, but yeah, the Ferrari looked uh, it looked really good up until uh, three laps from the end. Yeah. Um, Oops. But yeah. Uh, yeah, Felipe seemed to get a lot, uh, lot out of the car, more so than, uh, than Kimi Räikkönen. Yeah, well, I actually said in the last podcast, I think it was the PlayStation one, that um, Hungary's usually a pretty boring race. But I've got to say, this was... Probably the most exciting Hungarian Grand Prix I've, I've ever seen. Um, I know there was one with some rain that was pretty exciting, but uh, this one was great, Mass. Oh, it's um, fantastic. You know, at first I thought Massa was just running away with it, and then, uh, you know... As we all did. Yeah. And uh, then Lewis had his problem, of course, with the puncture or, uh, with the tyre. Mm. Um, and then it, there was just so much excitement. Was, and then all of a sudden, here comes Tim O'Glock. Yeah, Tim uh, did. <laughs> to take advantage. Yeah. And uh, he drove a good race, I thought. Um, he was uh, he was pretty pretty damn quick, and uh, at the end of the day, mate, he finished uh, in second place, which was terrific, not only for Toyota but for uh, for Timo uh, himself, and good for his confidence. Yeah, genuine pace from the Toyota. I said in a comment to one of you guys that um, I I felt like there was genuine pace from Toyota. They did really well mm. to get Timo up there on the podium, and uh, you know, Max, I've, I've always been a big fan of oh, Timo, so yeah. I, was, I was pretty happy. Had had a bit of a lull, and we were coming that he really needed to pull it together, mm. and to get a podium. I'm oh, so happy for Timo. No, it, was, uh, it was great. Toyota are having a, uh, a pretty half-decent year this year, which is, uh, I think, as we'd all agree, um, not before time. Um, but, yeah, it was good to see him up there. I was bitterly disappointed for Felipe. Um, oh, you know, it's a, it engine. can be a cruel sport, there's no doubt about it, but uh, he, he was gone for all money, mate, with three laps to go. It, uh, yeah. it should have been his in a bag. And such an unusual sight as well to mm. see a Ferrari blow up near the end, or any car. Uh, they've had such good reliability in F1 since they changed the engine rules, mm. etc. cetera. Mm. Um, and you, it used to be that you'd be waiting to last lap and hoping it wouldn't explode, but the last few years it's pretty much been, it's been great. a given that they continue, but uh, Massa, with that explosion towards the end, it was heartbreaking. And you know, he's been pissed since, of course, he's been really upset about it, mm. uh, rightly so, Max. But he's proved to everyone that he's still there. I mean, I think that's an mm. important thing as well. Ferrari's not just Kimi Raikkonen, and it's definitely Felipe Massa as well. And he did everything with his, mm. within his power to win that race. And, uh, you know, these, these things happen. Ask Mark Weather, for example, when he was at Williams about engine failures and gearbox failures and the like. Um, he'll tell you all about it. But uh, yeah. I think Felipe will dust himself off and uh, pick himself up and, uh, and put in a good showing. He seems to have come good uh, uh, of late. Yeah, and of course the result at the end of the Grand Prix was Heike Kovalainen getting his first win. Mm. Um, and I thought that he would get a win this season, but uh, you know, I thought that perhaps the first one, or at least a few, a couple of them, would be inherited. And there's, you know, there's no doubting that two of the front runners dropped out, yeah. so yeah. it was a bit of an inherited win. But there's plenty of wins that are like that, and Heike deserves the win. He did fantastically yeah. to be there. Mate, and exactly. I was so happy to see Heike win in the race. So I love it when Grand Prix drivers win their first race, mm. and they're up on the podium and stuff. It's, it was cool. No, he was ecstatic, yeah. and, uh, and he had every right to be. Um, I said in the off-season that I did, didn't think he'd win a race this year. Um, okay, admittedly he inherited the win, but you still have to put yourself in a position to take mm. advantage of uh, other people's uh, failures, and he was right there, and, uh, and congratulations to him. I thought he drove a wonderful race as well. Yeah, so it was a great Grand Prix. Uh, Heike, Timo, Kimi. Um, he was struggling a little bit during the race, and mm. um, at least the ITV commentators with Hill, um, they were saying, oh, you know, does he, you know, what's going on with him? And as it turns out, he just had a mechanical you know, problem with the car, so... Mm. 
you know, there's no motivational problems with Kimmy, so... That's uh, a couple of crucial points for him, mate. Uh, yeah. The championship is tight as it's been since I can remember. Mm. Um, and it's shaping up to be a terrific uh, finale to the season. Um, and good to see, um, uh, you know, the likes of, uh, of Kimmy getting their first win. As you said, it's always good to see a driver get their first win. But to me, it just adds a bit more spice to the Constructors' Championship uh, as well with, uh, with Kimmy... Uh, with, um, with Hakey, with Hakey yeah. getting the win there, so uh, it's set to be a good latter part of the season, I think. Yeah, definitely, and we've got a three-week gap now, so oh, we've got to wait those three weeks. It's just murder. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> um, so we've got three weeks to Valencia, a brand new circuit, uh, mm. never been raced, obviously, so all the teams have got uh, the same, uh, well, nothing to work with, really, no except, their, except their own testing, and their, sorry, their own data and their own uh, simulations. Simulations, yeah. yeah. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you very soon for the next episode. All right, guys, see you. Okay, bye.